uh, zone in one and two are uh, still being managed through pristine uh, uh, management. There's there's very little activity here. Now, the unique part about zone three is zone three, which is what I'm gonna talk about today, you see this boom here. This is the hot water discharge for the power plant. So you have a marine protected area that exists uh, simultaneously symbiotically with the discharge line from the power plant, which is here. So the intake line is here, discharge line is here. If you didn't have a power plant discharge, maybe you wouldn't have an MPA today. I don't know, but that's the way it sits. So it's a very strange and unique situation. Now, this Doha Shore line here, we're gonna talk about some more. Basically, uh, Doha Shore is uh, semi-hard. It has a caliche hard substrate. Uh, there's seagrasses out here, clam beds. This area here, mud flat. Wet flat, salt flat, with a mixture around Umadabin Island of rocks and mud. So the biodiversity, or the, the life, the kind of organisms that live here, vary as you come across to here. So there's more mud crabs, and, and here there's more clams, okay? So what happened was, uh, zone three was transferred to us. So this zone three today uh, has sand berms, has some vegetation in the, on the terrestrial side. Uh, it used to look different a few years ago, and we're going to talk about how and why uh, that has happened. But basically, snakes live on, on shore, seabirds, lots of seabirds, flamingos, and everything else that migrate in and out. And lots of mudskippers. Lots of lots of mudskippers. So, oops. So the overall circulation in Kuwait Bay and the inner part of Kuwait Bay. So there's a, there's a great current pattern that flows out here, higher energy. Slave Khat Bay, lower energy, more enclosed. So the water that comes in used to flow this way and meander through across. Uh, there was some construction that was done here and here, or deconstruction here and some dredging here that has changed the circulation pattern somewhat. And that has dramatically affected um, the, this this area here. Now the, the amazing part about this location, especially on the Doha shore, is as the tide goes out, then you're exposing over a kilometer of, of, of sea bottom. So the tidal cycles there are amazing. And as I said, fiddler crabs on this side, lots of fiddler crabs, lots of sea grass. Now, before the, the, the plastic situation, which is what we're gonna talk about today, the plastics in the Doha side, before the removal of the monitoring station, which if I go back one moment. So the monitoring station for PATH is, was right here. So this is the area we're gonna talk about that was removed. Uh, so the plastic situation before removal, Doha side, lots of plastics, lots of mainly the source of being recreational fishermen uh, tossing plastic bottles. The second main source was the ships that go by because of the Doha port. Uh, on the MBA side, lower energy, very pristine, very, very, very pristine area. This is what it looked like a few years ago, and you can see it's just amazing. And uh, actually, the fisheries lab, we used it for training our, our personnel on how to do transects and surface and everything else. And, you know, over here, this in this image right here is the water discharge line. So, you know, apart from your exos, of course, there's some unexploded munitions on that side, but, you know, for, for intensive purposes, it's relatively clean. So, then the removal process, now let's see if this works. The removal process began, and, and you can see in the animation, I kind of got these from Google Earth, but you can see as this area here starts being removed, silt, sediment, and the currents start changing in this area. <laughs> so this is from 2011 down to 2015 from Google Earth. But you can see here, this is being removed. And things start to change here dramatically. Okay, so I kind of did a little bit of a zoom in. And then the next slide. Okay, so the same process. Now we're focusing here. This is the MPA that we're monitoring. So this had a straight shoreline. Then removal started to happen. Erosion, enc encroachment of salt water, and exposing of ancient mudflats that were buried under sedimentation here. And you can see how things completely start changing. Silt starts to build up here, where there was no silt. Um, basically, the only thing keeping it going is actually the water discharge. Now, this provided, this gave us some very interesting challenges. Okay, so this is a very protected area. Um, 
the thing we started noticing, plastics, plastic bottles started showing up. So this is the water discharge line here. So you're talking about 50 meters in. The, the, the water would come all the way in now and start dumping these plastic bottles. So the energy regime has changed. The tidal regime has changed today. The other thing, we have this inlet that formed on the right side of the pipeline that is encrusting the entire area with salt. So it's changed from this to more cyanobacterial mats. And the discharge line itself, which is right here, has faced a huge, huge erosion, which is actually now we have to talk with the Ministry of Power to fix it. But it gives you a scale of how much has changed in three years. I'm talking maybe just one and a half meters across for three years. And on the other side, again, what used to be pristine uh, plants and everything has become salt flats. And interestingly enough, the, the main talk, part of this talk of these plastics are showing up out here. Whereas before, if we saw them when we went on the shoreline, they're showing up a kilometer, two kilometers in. That's where the water's taking them. On the good side of the story, on the Doha side, removal of this, uh, this land space has greatly reduced the amount of plastics there. The plastics are, are, are gone. This is not an MPA, but I suspect it will be soon. Uh, the circulation has improved. So we suspect seagrasses will come back. And then there are some seagrass beds here. So we'll keep an eye out for dugongs maybe in the next few years. So this is where the Doha, the Doha spit used to be. And now we can see it's just that. So that's basically the, the good news on the Doha side. The ban on fishing reduced the amount of plastics. There's no fishermen out there, no recreational boats. Plastic debris stopped. Uh, the currents are cycling the area. On our side, we have a unique situation where the, the velocities are eating away at the land, and we need to come up with some innovative solutions for it. So looking forward, what, uh, what we recommend for Doha, this is the, right now is the time to really monitor. Things are going to improve, or we're hoping they will. Um, and uh, on the NPA side, what we need to start thinking about, and we're getting all the stakeholders, including the Ministry of Power involved, is are we in a situation where anthropogenic causes have caused it? Fine. This, this land spread didn't exist 50 years ago. That was the justification for removal. But the unintended consequences is on the other side now you have erosion. So do we, as people go back in and try to fix it. You know, it's obvious after three years, it's not resolving itself. So this is really an interesting challenge. It's gonna be a very interesting research study the lab will undertake, perhaps the most ambitious thing we do, uh, on how to preserve this area and preserve the biodiversity in it. And just one point, why is an MBA in a fisheries lab? This water discharge, for reasons we have yet to fully understand, uh, can account for 40% of our sea breed mating or breeding sea breed population during the early spring, which is right now. They're all here spawning. So, which is, again, they're taking advantage of a hot water discharge for some reason, but it's still important for us today. So, you know, fish like electrical discharge. Okay? Thank you very much.